Ted Kaminsky. Thanks for waiting for an extra minute or so. I am with Strand Hill Properties, and this is another episode of The Ed Zone, where I'm going to present to you facts and figures and everything real estate live. So you have the opportunity to listen, learn a few things if you don't know them already, and ask questions if you'd like. So feel free to post any questions. I'll try to address them during this broadcast. Where are we today? We are standing and trying to understand value, pricing. How do you figure this stuff out? Within a, a couple blocks of here, you can have a property on a 3,000 square foot lot be worth $15 million. And you can have one on a 3,000 square foot lot be worth under $2 million, all within a couple of blocks. How do you figure this out? I tried to sit there one day, and that was the idea of this broadcast, and just figure out every possible question that affects the value of sand section real estate. I came up with dozens. So you know what? I'm just gonna roll through them. And I have my sheet, I have them memorized. Are they accurate? No. Most of the time they're way off, as much as 25, 30% I've seen. So if you are buying in a sand section, selling in a sand section, these list of questions are gonna be helpful. So I'm gonna run through some of these pretty quickly. Is it on a walk street or is it a and is it sloped? So where are we standing today? We are on a sloped walk street. What does that give you? First of all, quiet, privacy, well, now we're standing next to a new construction site. It's not that quiet. Um, but certainly, uh, you don't have any cars driving by on a daily basis. You, what do you have? This amazing views. You can see Manhattan Beach Pier. Is it a drive street or an alley? Uh, significant difference. Is it south or north of Marine? Marine Avenue, another cutoff. Getting north of Marine, you're closer to the north end of town. South of Marine, you're getting closer to the heart of downtown. Uh, is it south or north of Rosecrans? Anybody from around here knows if you get north of Rosecrans, we call that El Porto. It's a different value module over in the El Porto area than it is south of Rosecrans. It's less expensive there. Can you easily walk to downtown? Walkability has been the topic everywhere. Downtown Manhattan Beach, one of the greatest places to, to walk around, to enjoy the shopping, the restaurants, the bars, the access to the beach. So if your home is walkable, the value is up. Uh, which downtown are you referring to? The real downtown, down there, or the north end? Because some people that live in the north end count that as their downtown. And we're still speaking of Manhattan Beach. Is it west of Highland? Is it 
if it's west of Highland, is it the 100 block or 200 block? Different pricing, again, based on the block. Does it have a view? Is it an ocean view? Is it an ocean, if it's an ocean view, can you see the sand or can you see the white water? Is the view directly west or is it south or is it north? What's better? Most people will say a south face, just like we are right now, a south facing view is your preferred view. Why? That is where the sun sets. The sun, you're gonna see the sunset every single day. The sun sets from the south. Therefore, this is the sunny side of the house. If you like the sun, you like light, you like bright, you want a south facing sand section property. Is the view obstructible? Clearly a major effect on value. Can the home next to you block your view? Is the uh, home across the street able to block your view? These are factors to look at. Blockable, unblockable views. Uh, is there a deed restriction on the lot to protect the view? Are there wires and poles in the view? We're starting to see the city of Manhattan Beach and local residents uh, fighting to get more poles and wires down to enhance their views, of course, enhance their values. Has the city approved a certain location for removal of the wires and the poles, but it's not yet down? Does the property face south or north? Who was the builder of the home and what's his reputation? Who was the architect and what's his reputation? How is the functionality of the floor plan? You've seen some homes built that are amazing, great open floor plans, big decks, perfectly laid out, and others that are inferior to that. Has a major effect on value. Does the floor plan take advantage of the views? You'd be surprised going back to the 50s when homes were built around here where they did not take views into account when building some homes here in the South Bay, not just Manhattan Beach, but throughout the beach area. What year was the property built? You know, I just recently read, uh, this was out about Beverly Hills, that if a home is 10 years old in Beverly Hills, it likely needs remodeled. And if it's 20 years old, it's probably considered a teardown. It is shocking what is happening with the market today and what people are doing with homes that appear to be relatively new. What are the ceiling heights? I'll touch briefly on that. Ceiling heights are so critical. In today's architectural um, desires of buyers and, and architects alike, they're pushing to try to get ceiling heights in the area at 10 feet minimum. You've got a 10 foot high ceiling, it feels voluminous, it feels larger. Um, but if you go back to the homes again, built in the 50s and the 60s, you'll often see eight foot ceiling heights tremendous effect on the feel of the home and certainly the value. What are the doorway heights? How large is the master suite? How large is the master closet? How large are any of the closets? How close are you to a busy street? Can you hear traffic noise? Is the home currently in style? Was the home remodeled? What year was the home remodeled? Was it tastefully remodeled? Is there a place for your dog to go outside? Is there a place to barbecue? I'm standing on a massive deck. That is definitely today's architects are really taking advantage of outdoor space much more than before. They put their prerequisite deck in the 80s and the 90s and it was a five foot deck. You can barely get a chair on it. Today, these are highly usable decks for entertaining, barbecuing, everything. Does it have a rooftop deck? You may say in Manhattan Beach it's not allowed. There are some that were grandfathered in. Does your neighbor block your views? Can your neighbor eventually block your views? Is the home ocean front? If it is ocean front, what sits in front of it? Is it pure sand? Is it a restroom? Is it a volleyball court? How large is the deck off of the living space, which we just touched on? How many cars can I park off street? Has any of my neighbor's landscaping obstructed the views and there's nothing I can do about it? Does the neighbor have constant Airbnb guests that annoy the other neighbors? Does it have an elevator? If it does not have an elevator, can you put one in? I think I skipped, does it have new construction nearby? I don't know if you heard, there's saws going off like crazy. So having a new construction project nearby 
is going to enhance its future value, but current value, it can have a detriment because no one loves living next door to construction projects. There's nothing fun about it. Last, there are likely, oh, uh, there are likely another half a dozen different options out there or questions that can affect value that I may not have touched on. If you want this list, I'm going to tell you there's a place to get it. You can go to edspricingpuzzle.com and you'll have an opportunity to download that list if it's important to you. If you're selling or buying, if you can answer all those questions, you're certainly going to have better information to be able to determine your value. So I'm going to look and see if any of you guys wrote in any questions. So I'm going to go live here. How well does property hold value in the sand section of Manhattan Beach? It's a great question. I also get the question, do prices always go up in the sand section of Manhattan Beach? The one thing I can tell you after seeing the downturn multiple times, what happened the last couple times that I noticed is when property values went down, the sand section of Manhattan Beach was the last to start seeing the downturn. And when the market turned back up, it was the first to see the upturn. Did it see a downturn? 100% yes. All markets do at some point or another. Uh, additionally, that sounds like a repeat of the same question. Which neighborhood in Manhattan Beach is undervalued today? Undervalued today? Well, that's a loaded question. Um, I think I wouldn't call it neighborhoods as much as I would say opportunities. Do you have the vision to change or update or remodel a home that maybe hasn't been touched? Because I still find today buyers in this town love to move in and be done. They're busy, they're working, they have kids, they got 14 kid activities. To sit and work on a remodel project is just going to eat their time. So looking for opportunities where others just can't deal with it is really where you're going to get your best value. Um, I will say though where I'm standing right now, the sand section has continued to outpace most markets I've ever watched, especially as you get closer to the water. Homes that are selling for $10 million off the beach. These homes 30 years ago were just, you know, they were under $100,000, just like everything else around here. So to see that kind of uptick in pricing like the Strand and anything close to the water, if you can afford it, I have to assume that is always going to be a really highly safe investment if the market continues like it has the last 100 years. Um, with that, I think I'm going to close out unless there's any last questions. Oh, wait. One more. How much do your price in schools near the beach? How much do your price in schools near the beach? I will tell you, I don't understand the question. So I'm going to move on. <laughs> um, do schools affect value? 100% Manhattan Beach schools certainly are rated extremely high and is why people move to Manhattan Beach, Redondo Beach, El Segundo, Hermosa Beach, all highly rated schools, Palos Verdes. We're really fortunate here in the South Bay to have great school systems. So all these areas are certainly affected by the school system. So with that, thank you for listening. If you want to download that list of pricing variables, go to edspricingpuzzle.com and check it out. Thank you for watching another episode of The Ed Zone. We appreciate you and you have a great day. We're signing out.